Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. It is January the 2nd, and I'm praying that already the year has got off to a good start. If not, stay in faith. Let's believe together for God to completely do tremendous things in our lives, in, in, in this season of our lives and in our church. Well, on Monday the 2nd of January, here we are. I want to start a new devotional series with you over the next few days that I've called Get Up, Get Up. Joshua chapter 1, 1 to 2 says this, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, get up. Get up. This is a turning point in history for God's people. The old has gone. The new is here. 2022 is over. 2023 is here. It's a new day. Now, what's amazing about this story in Joshua chapter one is that we have no indication whatsoever that Joshua had ever heard the voice of God before. We, we don't hear that anywhere, but we know that Joshua had practiced the presence of God. What do I mean by that? Well, he was there at times when Moses was hearing from God, when Moses was in the presence of God. We have we have stories that tell us that, Jos that, uh, that Joshua was in close proximity. And now Moses is dead and God is saying, it's time to get up. Now, why is he saying get up? He's saying get up, presumably, because Joshua was sitting down. He's sitting down. The great leader Moses is dead. It's a new season. And he's looking at the responsibility of 3 million plus Israelites that he's leading into the promised land. Moses had failed to get them into the promised land, even though the land was promised by God. You can imagine the turmoil that Joshua is in at the start of this season. And God comes and speaks to him and says, get up. And I want to say to you all right now, where you are, get up, get up, get up out of the old season and get up and enjoy and live through this next season. So this devotional series is called Get Up. Let me give you one thought for today. And that's simply this. It's time to get up in faith. Get up in faith. Just on December the 30th, I talk a little bit about faith, but let me give you a little bit more about faith. Faith is not closing your eyes to past realities and current responsibilities. Faith is embracing God possibilities. It's about taking hold of what is naturally impossible and believing God that it can be done. Now think about Joshua. Joshua's reality was bleak. It was bleak. And let me tell you why it was so bleak. It was so difficult for Joshua. Well, I'm going to give you six reasons. Number one, firstly, Joshua had to follow Moses as leader. I mean, how do you follow such a brilliant leader? How do you follow uh, a Winston Churchill type prime minister? How do you follow Sir Alex Ferguson, who is greatest manager to have ever have managed football, you know, a football team before? How do you follow Queen Elizabeth II? How do you follow such a great leader? And, and surely that was a reality for Joshua. How does he follow Moses? You almost get that sense where, all of the people were wearing WWMD bands. What would Moses do bands? And Joshua had to live and lead in a world where they were comparing him constantly to the greatness of Moses. The second thing that made the situation challenging for Joshua was that Joshua was raised a slave, but Moses was raised a prince. Now, this is interesting. This is really important because Moses thought out of the box. Moses had this natural way of thinking that anything is possible because he was raised with wealth and he was raised in academia and he was raised as, as, a, as a son of Pharaoh's house. He was raised as a prince, but, but, but Joshua was raised a slave. He was, he was used to chains. He was used to being told what he could do and couldn't do. And so his thinking had to change. You're going to have to get up in faith in your thinking, Joshua. Don't think like a slave anymore. The third thing that made it challenging for uh, Joshua was that he had to lead people where he had never been before. Joseph had never, uh, sorry, Joshua had never led people into the promised land. 
you know, Joshua had never led 3 million people plus on his own before. He'd never been this way before. And of course, we have this famous verse in Joshua 3, where the God says, I'll show you which way to go since you've never been this way before. This is definitely a challenge for him. Definitely a challenge for Joshua. How's he going to go where he's never really been himself? The fourth thing about Joshua is this, is that, is that Joshua had to teach people to farm, whereas Moses provided ready meals for the people. And that was definitely, you know, it was easier with Moses. They didn't have to do anything. The food appeared. But now with Joshua, now with Joshua, everything's different. They're going to have to farm. They're going to have to find their food. The fifth challenge that Joshua was facing was that he had to turn fell walkers. He had to turn walkers into fighters. These slaves weren't fighters. These slaves had walked for 40 years and now they're learning how to fight. And the sixth challenge that Joshua had to overcome was that he had to, he arranged for all the men to be circumcised. Now, fellas, think about this. If you had to vote for him as leader and that was part of his, his, his manifesto, how many of us would not be voting for him? And he had all these things going against him, but he had to rise up. He had to get up in faith to take hold of what was naturally impossible, but get this, supernaturally probable. And I want to say in this new year, friends, it's time to get up. Why settle for what was? Why settle for average? Why settle for mediocrity when you can believe God for the supernaturally probable? It is time to believe God again. And how are we going to do it? I'll tell you how, friends. We are going to get up in faith in Jesus' name. Amen.